Jets will do it again. Luke Croy launches. This is way back. And the Bulls have won. Jonathan Luke Croy with a walk-off homer. That was the scene last night at Miller Park. What a finish it was. And now we turn our attention to Saturday baseball here at Miller Park. It's the Brewers and the Reds, game three of this four-game series. What a gorgeous day for baseball, for tailgating, for doing whatever you like today. And we are delighted to have you with us. The loop is wide open. Good evening, everyone. Brian Anderson along with Bill Schroeder. Great to have you with us. We're looking forward to this matchup tonight, a series that is all tied at one game apiece. Thanks to Jonathan Lucroy, and I think it's time to start thinking about Lucroy as one of the elite hitting catchers in all of baseball at this point. Yeah, he's been unbelievable. In the last 72 games, Jonathan Lucroy has raised his bat batting average from 208 to 286, and using the approach that he was able to use last night, taking that ball through the middle, he doubled in the left center, and then finally, in his last at bat last night, a roll to Chapman after a number of fastballs, hung the slider, knocked it out of here. And Jonathan Lucroy certainly has been the main cog in the Brewers' offensive machine so far this year, leading the team in RBIs. And you can see what he's been doing amongst catchers this season. Highest slugging percentage of any catcher in all of baseball, Jonathan Lucroy. And Jonathan is certainly the guy that the Brewers have been counting on. Batting in that number three spot, he's making a name for himself this year. Yeah, he has settled right in, having a career year at homers and runs batted in. Well, tonight the Brewers are going to get back Giovanni Gallardo, their opening day starter. He's been on the DL for a little over two weeks. He returns tonight. Craig and Augie will break down Gallardo's return to the Miller Park mound after this. And it's presented by Menard. Save big money on all your home improvement needs at Menard. By Miller Lite. It's not just a good time, it's Miller time. And by Toyota. Let's go places. Summer nights in August don't get any better than what we've got for you here in Milwaukee. It's game three, the Reds and the Brewers. 
As we welcome you back to our telecast on Fox Sports Wisconsin, Matt Latos, a sensational season for the Reds. Giovanni Gallardo looking to even up his record, but he hasn't pitched in a little more than two weeks. He's been on the disabled list during that time. It was a hamstring injury he suffered back at the end of July at Wrigley Field. He has had an up and down season prior to that. Do you see him potentially using this now to change things around the rest of the way? Yeah, I, I think it's going to really help help you. And one thing about that injury that had happened, it was good that they found it early because landing in that front leg is so important on your delivery and having that good command and that good rhythm that he needs. But for Giovanni Gallardo tonight, it's all going to be about command. Commanding that fastball with good location and then the ability to use his secondary pitches, get that break of ball over the plate and get ahead of hitters. Very important for you tonight. A very painful injury, but Giovanni Gardo has been able to bounce back quickly and is set to take the mound here tonight. We'll see if his battery mate's going to be another hero. Brewers looking to grab a 2-1 lead in this long weekend series when we come back. Of this homestand, game three against the Reds, 76 beautiful degrees here in Milwaukee. And the Brewers take to the field in their home whites. And they'll be matching up against the Reds with their opening day starter, Giovanni Gallardo, tonight. Dusty Baker, he's cool and calm. Got his team in a pennant race once again this season after winning the Central Division in the National League last year. Baker twice has taken the Reds to the postseason. Got a great chance to do it again in 2013. His Piggly Wiggly batting order, it's Chu, Frazier, and Votto at the top. Phillips, Bruce, and Ludwig in the middle of the order with Cozart, Mezzarocco, and Matt Latos on the mound, who has been outstanding for Cincinnati this season, the big right-hander. That's the lineup rock that will face Giovanni Gallardo, who is welcomed back tonight for the first time since the 30th of July when he injured his hamstring. And he's 6-6 uh, six and six in 17 career starts against the Cincinnati Reds. 1-1 one one this year with an ERA in the twos. A 24th start for Gallardo. 8-9 and nine so far this year. He had a rough month of July. Pushing that earned run average to 4.91. Let's check out the Menards Brewers defense for tonight. Same lineup defensively as last night. Davis Schaefer Aoki in the outfield. Aramis Ramirez makes his third consecutive start at third base. That's good news for the health of his knee. Segura, Jeanette, Francisco around the horn. And Luke Croy, last night's hitting star behind home plate. 
Now you see the four man umpire and crew in place with the crew chief Mike Winters calling the balls and strikes tonight. Great night for baseball here in America's heartland and we're glad you're with us. Gallardo is ready to go Chu leads off and we are underway from Miller Park on a Saturday night. Brewers winning last night by a final of seven to six. And that thrilling end to the ball game. Brewers were down 6 5 until Luke Croyd launched the home run to win it. And his first career walk off home run. Luke Croyd continues to put up the big numbers offensively. And interesting last night that Renicky said as he hits, and he is a, a hitter first in many minds, but. His catching gets better and as his confidence grows as a hitter and he knows he's contributing because he is counted on to produce runs then he becomes a much better catcher. He's been throwing the ball very well. Mm -hmm. his, what, uh, his entire game has been very good. I mean I think it goes back to as you mentioned. And Luke Croy would never say but uh, as his offense has gotten better so has his defense and. You, know, you don't have that hanging over your head. You know, get off to a very slow start this year. Found playing time sporadic, Maldonado getting a lot of time, but right now it's been Luke Croy just, just about every day. Two and two to two misses low. Three balls, two strikes. Gallardo will be on a pitch limit tonight. Renicky wouldn't commit to a specific number, but they'll be paying close attention to him around the 75 pitch count. He's had pretty good success against the Reds this year and two starts, a 2-7-0 ERA. As Chu lines one to Ramirez. Had him in a perfect spot, and there is out number one. All right, keep a close eye on that front landing leg for Giovanni Garner. That's where he pulled that hamstring, and you know, a lot of times when you have problems in that area, you're going to shorten up that stride, and sometimes you're going to develop some arm problems. But looks like the stride is normal for Gallardo. Gallardo had to leave a game at Wrigley Field on the 30th of July, left hamstring injury, and it looked a lot more serious. When he walked off, looked like he might be spending a lot of time on the deal. Instead, it ends up being 17 days, so he misses a little over two weeks. And returning to the active roster tonight, Brewers were able to keep his arm strength up. They have all of these techniques to where you can take pressure off the legs, and you don't need the legs to keep your shoulder intact and your elbow. And the Brewers' athletic training staff. According to Gallardo did a great job to make sure he was ready to jump back into the rotation with no problem tonight. And now we'll see if the leg holds up. And he jumps into a starting rotation that's been very good in the month of August. About as good as it gets for these starters. This month you know first 16 games or first six, 16 days it's been uh, a highlight of the ball club. Two balls and a strike on Todd Frazier. Evens at two and two. Frazier was the tough out last night. He had three hits, including a home run. He drove in four runs. It's been a bit of a down year for him this season. He's hitting only 237. Dusty Baker trying to get him going, batting in the two spot in front of Otto. A 2 2, and Frazier fouls it away again. Brewers actually have a lot of options in their starting rotation now with the emergence of Tom Gorzolani and the fact that he is going to remain in the rotation. Brewers will be expanding rosters September 1st. So that could add to the mix as well. Ron Renicki is talking about a six man rotation. A lot of decisions need to be made not necessarily on Pitchers like Loesch and Estrada and Gallardo, but certainly, you know, Tom Corzellani's in a two year deal. He'll be back next year. Are they thinking about him as a starter or a reliever? We'll see. There's a swing and a miss. Gallardo strikes him out. Looked like a slider. And the first strikeout for Gallardo, the second out of the inning. It's going to be important for Gallardo, as always, to be able to get ahead. In the count, and you see the spin, the rotation, the slider going down away from Todd Frazier, and he tried to pull it. And we'll see if Gardo has command. He's going to use the slider more or the curveball. The curveball is a big, important pitch for him. 
So two gone and here is Joey Votto now. Votto last night was 0 for 3 but certainly impacted the game. Had a couple of nice plays defensively. He drew two walks. He takes so much out of a pitcher to get through a Votto at bat. Certainly sets the rest of the lineup up after that including guys like Phillips and Bruce who hit immediately behind Joey Votto. And it's not unusual for Votto to have a full count. I mean just about every at bat last night. One ball one strike. And that one misses away two and one on Votto. And Votto's numbers down against left handed pitching this year about 275 but right handers he's been wearing those guys out right handed pitching. Hitting at a 344 clip. That's the best in the National League. Seems to always have himself in a hitter's count as well. And the 2 1 is fouled away. A little bit late. 2 and 2 now on Votto. Overall, the Reds are ninth in the league in hitting as a team. That is a number that is down a little bit. Their story this year has been their pitching, and specifically their starting pitching. But they still have some thumpers in their lineup, including Votto and Phillips, who is making a run at an RBI title this year. He hits cleanup. And of course, Jay Bruce, always a threat at the plate. And numbers offensively down. They're ni a ninth in the league in batting average, but fourth in runs. Well, they do hit a fair amount of home runs. They play in Great American Ballpark, a launching pad. And but you're right, the starting pitching has been very good, and they have, have been without Johnny Cueto for most of the season. Well, the Reds have one of their best on the mound tonight in Latos. As Votto swings and misses, Gallardo has a good slider going early tonight. Two K's and a three up, three down first. And rallied late, had a nice road trip, went five and four on uh, a recent nine game road trip, and now they've split this series with the Reds. And the Brewers trying to take a series lead tonight. And when it works, you stick with it. Renicki's batting order exactly the same among the position players. Piggly Wiggly batting order with Aoki, Segura, and Lucroy. And then you got Ramirez, Francisco, and Davis in the middle with Jeanette, Schaefer, and Gallardo rounding it out. And they'll face one of the league's best right hander Matt Latos. Yeah 12 and 3 and 3.04 and run average. He's in his fifth major league season. Big guy 6'6". 240 pounds only 25 years old. He's won his last four decisions and has not allowed a run. In his last two starts. His last outing against the Chicago Cubs a very good one. That was at Wrigley Field. He went eight innings. Did not allow a run, no walks. Melitos is not going to walk many. Nine strikeouts, and only needed 94 pitches to do it. So he's on a roll right now. Only the second time this year he's completed eight innings, and his 12th victory of the season. Latos, heavily tattooed, 
And he's got a lot of bulldog in him. He began his career with the Padres, traded to the Reds uh, prior to last season, and helped take Cincinnati to the postseason a year ago. And they are expecting him to be one of those power starters at the top of their rotation if they do indeed make the postseason once again this year. Aoki turns one around. That is way back. Bruce on the track reaches up to make the catch. Well, if he hits it to the right about five feet, he's got a home run. Instead, it is a loud out to get us started. Well, the Menards Reds defense. Jay Bruce, one of the best right fielders in the game. Ludwig gets another start. He started the first game of the series. He's in right field. Chew in center. Devin Mezzarocco back behind home plate. He's started the first three games of this series, and he has been catching Matt Latos just about every start this year. So those guys have it going on this year. And Mezzarocco has started all three games in this series so far. We did see Ryan Hannigan appear late in last night's game on a double switch. And he's back there once again. Gene Segura steps in batting 312. He had a key hit. A lot of talk about Lucroy's home run, but it was Segura who reached on an infield hit prior to that home run. And one of his three hits last night. Segura now has 11 three hit games, or 11 games with three hits or more, better stated. And the three for five night last night bumped his average up to 312. Now Segura just keep continues to put a good swing on the baseball. Got the benefit of a gift triple, actually off the glove of the second baseman, a triple, and then he singled into center field. Three for five, a triple, a couple of runs scored in RBI, and he just continues to get on base. Another infield hit last night. Well, there's a wicked breaking pitch from Latos, and he strikes out Segura for the second out of the inning. And here comes Luke Croy. And a big ovation for him. And Rock, that pitch sequence last night about as good as it gets. A seven pitch at bat. The first pitch to Luke Croy last night out of the strike zone. But everything else just about right down the middle. Luke Croy, one fastball after the other. A little bit late, a little bit tardy. And talking to Luke Croy before the game, he says he wasn't going to you know, get out of his approach. If he was going to be behind the fastball, so be it. Pitch number seven. Chapman hangs his slider and he knocks it out of the ballpark. And because he was behind on the fastball, Chapman threw the slider, was right in his wheelhouse, and he ended the ball game. First career walk-off home run for Luke Croy. Just a fantastic at bat, and one of those that you clip and save when you're not going well at the plate down the road, even into next year or years after, you might take a look at that whole sequence. And uh, talking to Luke Croy today, it all has to do with the swing and to stay compact as he puts it stay short to the baseball and yeah. where the ball ends up that depends on uh, where the bat makes contact and he got a hanging slider and he didn't miss it and the first time in his career that he's put the ball in play against the role this chap it actually wasn't in play was it it was out of play into the second deck yeah Lucroy was 0 for 5 lifetime against Chapman with five strikeouts before last night Gets jammed here, a bouncer to third, and both of these starters off to good starts. Three up, three down innings apiece. We're headed to the second.
second. Giovanni Gallardo back on the mound, and I caught up with him yesterday to see how that hamstring is feeling after a two-week stint on the disabled list. I feel good. Uh, throwing uh, two bullpens and then a touch and fill. It's, I haven't had any issues with uh, my hamstring. It's, I'm very anxious, you know, anxious to get back out there and uh, help the team out in whatever way I can. One thing Gallardo worked on with Rick Kranitz while he was on the disabled list was opening up his stance. Kranitz said he thinks Gallardo has a tendency to over-rotate, so he hopes opening up his stance will allow him to get a more straight-through delivery on the follow-through, guys. All right, Sophia, thank you. And uh, Gallardo retiring the side in order with two strikeouts in the first inning. Showed a very good slider in the first. Brandon Phillips on the first pitch out to Segura. No problem for the Brewers shortstop one away on one pitch. I missed that adjustment when I broke down the delivery. I feel kind of bad. That's okay. You can help us translate though. Gallardo said a few <laughs> things that uh, might need a, a quick glossary a baseball terminology the source. He said first of all he threw a couple of bullpens but then he said it, and then a touch and feel. Yeah well just trying to figure out what's going to be working for him and uh, you know it's been so long between starts whether it's going to be you know slider curveball. You know how he's going to incorporate those pitches. It's going to be how he feels out there on the mound, and you know what's working for him. And you know a couple of uh, a slight mechanical adjustments, and you know a lot of it has to do with just trying to keep that front shoulder closed, like a hitter is going to concentrate on doing to be able to get that arm over the top and everything working in rhythm and in continuity with it, with everything else. And that's how you you throw a lot of strikes. It's always fascinating to hear uh, players talk about, especially starters there between starts routine and. You know, sometimes they go after it hard in a bullpen. They really get up to game type uh, tension, or at least as close as they can get to it. Sometimes they're just throwing on flat ground down the uh, the baselines and just you know light toss. But it all has a purpose and it all has a plan leading up to that next start. So for Gallardo, the Brewers are hoping that. The layoff will do him some good. The fact that he didn't have to go get into game mode for a couple of weeks, but was still able to maintain his arm strength. And they're hoping for a finishing kick from Giovanni Gallardo. And you know, Gallardo wants to finish strong. It's been kind of a uh, a touch and go season. He's had some good months, he's had some bad months, and been relatively inconsistent and very unlike Gallardo throughout his career. Well, Jay Bruce has been one of his nemesis. Batters and uh, Bruce has been that way for most Brewer pitchers actually. And a swing and a miss. Gallardo strikes him out. So has good life. And Giovanni with three K's already. Bruce a 406 lifetime hitter against Gallardo with a couple of homers and Giovanni punches him out. At 86. It looked like a cutter that stayed down the middle and up and Jay Bruce swings right through it. Yeah, maybe one that was so bad it was good. All of his strikeouts on that late breaking cutter or slider. And here is Ryan Ludwig now. Ludwig started game one of this series on Thursday at the day off yesterday. He's just coming back to the active roster. Injured his shoulder on opening day and it required shoulder surgery and he missed four months. So the Reds are hoping this is going to be a big bat late season acquisition. They didn't need to go make trades because they knew Ludwig was coming back. He's 0 for 11 since returning. Shoots that one over to first and gobbled up over there by Juan Francisco. And Gallardo has a nice and quick three up, three down second inning.
Dolphins on the board. And on Sunday, September 1st, all fans in attendance at the Brewers Angels game will receive a bobblehead of Stormin Gorman Thomas, compliments of Wisconsin National Guard. Visit Brewers.com for tickets. He did a little ad lib right there. Took some liberties with that. By the way, did you see Matt Latos before the game? How about this pregame warm-up routine? Watch how far he throws this ball. Almost throws it into the Reds' bullpen from the left field line. <laughs> Man. Extreme long toss, and uh, that was right at the end of his flat ground warm-up routine. Then he goes out to the mound and starts throwing in the bullpen off the slope to get ready for the game. I can only think of two other guys that have that I've seen do that. I know there are more but I remember Barry Zito using the extreme long toss and then and then Trevor Bauer was another guy that came up briefly with the Diamondbacks last year. He's now with the Indians. He has that extreme long toss as well. Yeah well he had that what 45 minute uh, pregame routine. <laughs> That's about right. Right. Here's Aramis Ramirez leading off. Starting to show some life at the plate. Ramirez coming back from the disabled list. He was on the DL for a month and has missed about two months altogether this year on the DL. Two stints on the disabled list with the same injury, the left knee injury. But he's been playing third base. He's been running, scoring from first, and starting to see some good at bats from him. Unfortunately, not this time as Latos punches his ticket for the second strikeout and the first out of the second inning. So one away, and here comes Juan Francisco. And he is on the Powerball home run leaderboard and climbing fast. He hit one against Leak yesterday. And that was his 18th of the year. His 12th is a Brewer. And since uh, June 25th, Juan Francisco has more home runs than any player in the National League. He's got the 12. And he's starting to feel a little bit more comfortable as a first baseman. I guess last uh, week or so has been much better. We was really hoping that he's going to be able to put it together and perhaps use him at first base next year. I think the same argument can be said for Francisco that you. You say with Lucroy, he knows he's got a hit to stay in the lineup. That's not necessarily the case with Lucroy, but for a first baseman, you know, if you're going to be a below average first baseman, the Brewers think he can be better than that. You're certainly going to have to swing the bat and hit with power, and when you're not hitting, puts a little more pressure on your defense. And he just went through a, I think the best way to call it is he had the yips catching the baseball for a few games. He dropped a number of routine throws to first. And it got in his head a little bit and you know he's working on his footwork. First base is a new position for him. But as long as he hits he's going to be in the lineup. And he's done a lot of hitting lately. And he walks on four straight. And that's something that late does, does a lot of walking batters. I mean he's got a strikeout to walk ratio of three to one. A power pitcher with 154 strikeouts in 154 innings coming into tonight's game. Plato's back in May. May 11th had his worst start of the year against the Brewers at Great American Ballpark. Although he got a win. Right. Gave up seven runs, six earned. But the Reds ended up winning the ball game. Now Reds won that game 13 7. Latos at that time was 4 0. Deals a ball outside to Chris Davis. There's another guy swinging the bat well since coming back to the big leagues. It's 3 for 6 in this series with a homer. Hit a long home run just under Bernie's slide in deep left center. Has five home runs since his return. On July 23rd. So in 17 games since coming back to the big leagues, a 324 average, five homers, 12 RBIs. And getting consistent playing time. And he did not get a lot of playing time when he came out of spring training with the team on the bench a lot, lost his edge, and never really was able to get it going. 
much different story now. Tony Cingrani a fastball in on him and he pulls it nearly hits it onto the slide for Bernie. And he just continues to swing the bat well not only can he pull the ball for home runs he hits him out to right. That was the plate extremely well. Got a couple of home runs on the last road trip one in San Francisco the other in Texas. And then he homer Thursday. Ball and a strike Latos deals and Davis takes one inside. Leto struck out Ramirez, but then walked Francisco on four straight pitches. Now he's three and one on Davis. And a pitcher who likes to challenge hitters with his fastball. Davis certainly looking for the fastball on most occasions. And he missed. Back to back walks. And good patience by the young hitter, Chris Davis. Well, just get into those stretches where you, you just sometimes can't find that strike zone. He threw the only strike in the at bat with a slider and a miss with fastball. So, fastball command, not very good for Latos this inning. Latos has excellent command. He's not walked more than four batters in a single game this year and he's walked four on three occasions but he's coming off a start against the Cubs where he went eight innings did not walk a batter and struck out nine. And Litos hasn't given up a run in his last two starts. That was against Oakland and then on the road against the Cubs. Very good Oakland ball club good lineup. Scooter Jeanette takes a ball low. Scooter hitting 307. 75 big league at bats, and he has two hits in this series. Grew up a Reds fan. He lived in Cincinnati until he was 11, and they moved to uh, Sarasota, Florida, but very fond of the Cincinnati area. And uh, when the Brewers were there, Scooter was in the big leagues. He attended his old school, his old elementary school. And his first big league home run came against the Reds. And yeah, Lakos having a tough time with the mound, you know, scratching at it, uh, digging out uh, maybe a groove on the landing area, and you know, digging out a little area on the pitching rubber. So trying to get a little bit comfortable out there on the Brewer Miller Park mound. Two on, one away, and Jeanette takes a strike. Barely catching the outside corner with a two seam fastball. Looked like it was off the plate. Got a gift. Normally you don't get those calls when you're fighting your command and you're throwing a lot of balls. Jeanette with his second consecutive start at second base. And a couple of men on with one away. Latos a long look. Finally delivers and he strikes him out. That's a good slider. He's got a very good breaking pitch to go along with that two seamer. Well, Fox Sports 1 debuted today. It's now available on all major TV providers. Just go to FoxSports1.com to find out what channel Fox Sports 1 will be on in your area. They had a great debut today. Got some auto racing. They got the UFC tonight. And of course, they'll wrap up the day with 
a full day of highlights around all sports. So two outs and here is Logan Schaefer and he takes a strike. Yeah, Fox Sports Live will debut tonight. Schaefer getting the work in center field in the absence of Carlos Gomez. And he gets jammed a one hopper out to Cozart. Hustles it over to first to end the inning. So Latos back to back walks but he strands over right there. And the Brewers come up empty in the second. As we're in the middle of August, and I'm sure the home run leaderboard is looking a little bit surprising to even Ron Renicky. So on our AT&T Twitter poll, we're asking fans to tweet us at FS Wisconsin with who they think, which home run leader is the most surprising. Carlos Gomez leading the team with 18. Juan Francisco, his 12 home runs, the most in the National League since June 25th. And of course, Jonathan Lucroy, the walk-off hero last night with 17 on the season. Now, Carlos Gomez, his home run count will be held up while he recovers from that sprained right knee. But today was encouraging. He was off of the crutches. Ron Renicky saying he was feeling much better. There is yet no uh, timeline in place for when Gomez could make his return, guys. But they're encouraged by his progress today from how he was feeling yesterday. All right, Sophia, thank you. And, uh, of course, uh, these are important days to determine whether Gomez is going to need to go on the disabled list or not. The Brewers essentially playing a man short without him. So he could see a roster move tomorrow or the next day if Gomez doesn't improve enough to where he can actually play in a ball game in the next few days. You know, if he's going to miss five or six days, that's one thing. If he's going to miss, you know, eight to ten, you might consider putting him on the disabled list. Yeah, DL and bringing up another outfielder or maybe get replace him on the roster with somebody so that when you, you know, go through this tough stretch of games against the National League Sense. You got Cincinnati, St. Louis, Pittsburgh, you're going to be dealing with. You need to be at full strength. You can't be playing short. One and two to Cozart. And did he go? They will ask. And he's able to check his swing. Talented young shortstop, Zach Cozart. Having a down year offensively. The Reds thought he'd hit. For a much higher average. Has some pop in his bat. He does have nine home runs this season. Always plays a great shortstop defensively. Bouncing ball to Segura. And one shortstop retires the other. Let's get you an update. We're checking in on the action from earlier today. It was the St. Louis Cardinals at Wrigley Field. And Yadier Molina goes deep in the sixth inning. And at the time that made it four to nothing and that's how the game would end the Cardinals 
shut out the Cubs. Joe Kelly picked up his fourth win. Travis Wood, who was an All Star this year, he took the loss. You see the Pirates two and a half ahead of the Reds and the Cardinals. Pittsburgh is losing big right now to the Diamondbacks. Mazzarocco bounces out for the second out of the inning. That's going to go down to the wire. It's going to go down to uh, you know the last week. You would think it looks as though all three of those teams, barring any major collapse, probably going to go to the postseason. We'll see, but it's going to be uh, fun at the end of the season to watch those three teams go at it. And Brewers will have a little bit, of, a little bit to say about who uh, gets uh, the division championship this year. Carsoup.com email the booth question today. How does a pitcher keep his arm strength while on the DL? Eddie is asking and pretty sophisticated operation down there how they can do that. There's a and to take pressure off the leg. So Gallardo has a leg injury a hamstring injury and right after the injury they still allowing him to keep his arm strength up and uh, some of the ways that he does it they have the machine down there they yeah. use the uh, the cords the elastic bands that they uh, do for the uh, flexibility keep the strength up you do the range of motion that you would be doing when you're throwing the baseball that Latos into center field and Gallardo has another smooth inning three up three down he's retired nine in a row to get us started no score at Miller Park. Baseball on Fox Sports Wisconsin is presented by Piggly Wiggly, the official supermarket of Fox Sports Wisconsin. By Ho Chunk Gaming Wisconsin, your ticket to more. And by Marshfield Clinic. Don't just live, shine. No better place in the country to be than right here, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Boy, look at this weather. Sun setting, just a beautiful night. And the Brewers and the Cincinnati Reds at Miller Park tonight. Both pitchers off to good starts. Latos did walk two last inning, but pitched around it, stranding both runners. He has three Ks. Gallardo has retired the first nine he's faced with three strikeouts. And Gallardo will lead off this bottom of the third. Gallardo has been a good hitter this year. He's 10 for 42 at the plate. He's hitting 238. Giovanni, a career 210 hitter. He's got 12 home runs, 40 RBIs in his career. Now, two of those have come this season. Two homers, three runs batted in this year. Always a threat. With a bat in his hands. He won the Silver Slugger Award a few years back, back in 2010. That year, he hit 254 with four homers and 10 RBIs.
Brewers will have Gallardo, Aoki, and Segura. Heading back to the top of the order after this. Gallardo lashes away, and it's two and two. A good hack, 94 mile per hour fastball. And Leto is winning about the walk and throwing right down the middle. Charter high speed pitch. The two starters and their velocities. Gallardo topping out at 92. Latos has already hit 95. And it got him. Latos went to the fastball and struck him out. Fourth K for Matt Latos. Yeah, two swing, two looking. You got Ramirez on a call of strike three, and that one right on the corner. Back to the top of the order now on Aoki, who almost hit one out in the first inning. Gave it a ride, sent Bruce back to the wall. Or he's been fighting a slump lately. He's hitting just 275 now after his line drive out. Boomers would love to see him get hot as they go through this National League Central. Two for ten in this series so far. After a road trip where he had just seven hits and hit under 200. Yeah, we've been watching Aoki for a couple of years now, and a very streaky hitter is how you would classify Nori. He'll go through stretches where they can't get him out, and then he'll go through stretches where he's having a tough time. Hopefully, he's on the tail end of a rough stretch. Yeah, Brewers need him in this stretch of games against the league's best. Well, with Gomez injured, Renicky feeling that Aoki is still best suited in right field because Schaefer is available to play center. But if anything should happen to a a short roster of outfielders, Aoki would eventually go to, to center field as he slashes that one into left and it's down, a base hit. So two hard hit balls tonight from Aoki, his first hit of the game. And the Brewers get their first hit against Matt Latos. And that's his game right there, just slicing one into the left field on a pitch that a lot of guys are going to try and pull. And watch him, a two seam fastball, left it out over the plate, and Oki pulls the hands in, gets on top of it. Like he's chopping wood, check it out. He exaggerates that downward action to get on top and lines it into left. Very balanced spray chart for Nori Aoki, and he has another base hit to left to add to it. Got to bring up Segura, who is now four for eight lifetime against Latos. After Latos struck him out with a slider in the first inning. Segura in the left, a base hit. So Latos coming inside on him with a fastball, and Segura turned on it. Back to back singles, two on with one out. And yeah, pulls those hands in again, just like Aoki, but this time Segura able to pull it. And another two seam fastball, supposed to be in. It was in. It wasn't even a strike. It was about four or five inches off the inside corner, and they would have popped those hips open and get the barrel to bat on it. He is the National League hits leader and he adds one to it. Now 149 hits for Gene Segura. Jonathan Lucroy with two on and one out. Grounded out to third his first time up. Latos misses with a big bender. Lucroy with a career high in home runs with 17 and RBIs with 64. With runners in scoring position this year, Lucroy is hitting 294.
He's just been very disciplined in his approach. We talked about a. Talked about that on Brewers Live and how he was very disciplined in his at bat against Goldish Chapman. He was behind the fastball and able to turn on the slider up in the strike zone. And you know, Luke Roy always looking to go up the middle in the right center. So it makes him so good. So it makes him a tough out in these spots. Interesting shot of that. The lace on Matt Latos's glove that. That's a borderline excessive if somebody somebody complain about it yeah. they'll have to do something about it cut it or tie it up or. Or do something not sure why he has that maybe to have it a little bit distracting. Feels like you know with a, a lace that long if you feel that a ground ball or. That lace could get in there. And I don't know why you'd want something like that but. He's no ordinary thinker, Matt Latos. And be it walks to a beat of a different drummer, right? <laughs> but I'll tell you what, he's been uh, drumming pretty good this year. Mm -hmm. Well, he's already in his fifth major league season. He doesn't turn 26 until December. Two and two, and Lucroy looks at one high, ball three. Latos, since the All Star break, is 4 and 0 with an ERA of 132. It's 12 wins and just two off the National League lead. Crowd chanting Luke. Make good speed on the bases. Let's see if Renicky sends him. Full count. Aoki at second, Segura at first. There they go and Lucroy in the right field. And Jay Bruce is going to make the catch and it's going to turn in to a double play. Segura never stopped. And the side is retired. So a base running mistake. Brewers with a zero in the third. Community Foundation Week. I'm joined now by the Brewers Wives and Melissa Kinsler is here. Melissa, the Brewers Wives are doing the Brewers Wives Mystery Bag event. What are the wives doing today? We're selling mystery bags. Uh, what it is is we're staffing tables around the ballpark. We have mystery bags for $40. There's an autographed baseball in the bag. Uh, trick is you don't know the autograph you're going to get, but it goes to a great charity. A great cause. Nicole Axford here to tell us the proceeds all go to the Meta House. What does the Meta House do to benefit the Milwaukee community? Well, it's an absolutely essential organization to the Milwaukee community. It supports women who are recovering from drug and alcohol abuse. And being wives and mothers ourselves, this is something certainly near and dear to our hearts. So, all right. Thank you, ladies, for joining us. And uh, there are still bags available, so fans can purchase a bag 
here and support the Brewers' wives and the Mystery Bake event, BA. All right, Sophia, thanks. Karen Renneke joining that group as well. And uh, good job by the Brewers' wives in raising a ton of money. The Meta House uh, doing an event uh, with them in the off season. They do great work there. And, yeah, and Brewers' wives very busy when the team's on the road doing putting together you know, different events to support the community here in Milwaukee. Well, Gallardo with a quick out, retiring Chu. Here's Todd Frazier now, and he shows bunt. That might give you an idea of how good Gallardo's stuff is early as Todd Frazier shows bunt in his second at bat. And pitch count in great shape for Yo. 40 pitches as he works here in the fourth inning. And the first three batters of the game for Gallardo all went to a three ball count. Two of them ended in strikeouts. He's had a couple of quick innings since. Lucroy sets up away and Frazier rolls over one to third. Strong throw from Ramirez. They just got him. Oh, oh, what an army. Hustling down that line. And Todd Frazier nearly beat that one at first base. As routine as it gets. Oh, Yvonne Garrido has been perfect through three and two thirds innings, three strikeouts. He's been able to get outs early in the count. And he seems to have pretty good command of a slider. Slash cutter and a fastball. We haven't seen that big overhand curveball yet. Now all three of his strikeouts have come on that particular breaking ball. Two in the first, had one in the second. He struck out Joy Votto on that slider in the first inning. Votto bats with two outs and nobody on. Otto comes in with a batting average of 318. He's fourth in the league in hitting. It's one of the toughest outs in baseball, Joey Votto. I gave you the numbers against right handed pitching. He's the best in the league in that category. The league leader in on base percentage and in walks. He has 92 walks this season. Shin Su Chu is second in the National League, his teammate. And look at the drop off from 92 to 77. That's second best. <laughs> and you wonder why Brandon Phillips has 90 RBIs this year? Well, the first and third hitters are on base just about every night. A swing and a miss on a 3 1 pitch. Right, and Vado chased a 3 0 pitch and fouled it back. He was late on that. And way behind a 3 1 count. Like Frank Howard would not like that. He'd always say, get that bad head out, young man, on a 3 0 3 1 pitch. He wouldn't say it quite as calm as that. No, he would he? He'd use a few <laughs> other words too in there. Uh, Gallardo lost him. Well, he's frustrated. He had him with two strikes, had come back, and he issues the walk, the first base runner for the Reds in the Next first trip to the stretch. For Gallardo. Oh, we invite you to set your compass due north Thursday nights on Fox Sports Wisconsin. You can join host Bill Shirk and Laura Shera as they take a look at the stories and adventures of outdoor enthusiasts in the upper Midwest. Due North Outdoors Thursday, 6 30 p.m. on Fox Sports Wisconsin. First blemish for Gallardo, a two out walk issued to Votto, and here is Brandon Phillips. Who swung at the first pitch his last time up? Does it again here, and there's the first base hit. So Phillips with the first Reds hit of the night. 
And now two on for Jay Bruce. Yeah, just the opposite of Joey Votto. And Brandon Phillips not afraid to go after a fastball first pitch. And he lines that one into center field. Fastball in. Able to get the bat head out there and get the first base hit of the night. A clean single. Phillips had two hits last night. Adds one to it tonight. And now Jay Bruce, who has great success against Gallardo, is hitting over 400 lifetime against Yo. Although Gallardo struck him out his last time up. Two on, two out. The shift is on for Bruce. And a breaking ball misses. And one of the first he's thrown. Not a bad choice to Jay Bruce. Now for those who think that Joey Votto needs to be more aggressive up there at the plate, well, look what's happened. He's walked with two outs. A Brandon Phillips base hit. And now Jay Bruce in a position to drive in a run. So Votto, although he's not you know, driving the ball out of the ballpark like, like he once did. He's in the middle of a lot of a lot of rallies. All right, they got Phillips in a rundown. Let's see how the Brewers execute this. Segura. And that'll be Jeanette who puts the tag on Phillips. The out is recorded. Phillips took off running. Votto broke to third. Phillips followed him. Didn't realize that Votto had stopped. And the Brewers get a gift from the Reds. Another base running mistake. Now what exactly is going on here? Base running. Wow. All over baseball has been bad. No score here at Miller Park as we head to the bottom of the fourth. And if you're looking for a reason to come to the ballpark tomorrow, tomorrow all kids 16 and under receive a free hot dog, soda, and blue bunny ice cream as part of birthday weekend at Bernie's presented by Southwest Airlines. You can visit brewers.com slash Bernie 40 for details. All weekend long we've been celebrating Bernie's 40th anniversary, guys. Yeah, I had a little uh, happy birthday song across the stadium to Bernie earlier tonight between innings. Chris brought a big smile to his face, Rock. Yeah. <laughs> it's like he can't even uh, not smile. That smile is just imprinted on his face. Now, Ramos Ramirez leads off. We've had two base running mistakes in this game, and even all stars make base running mistakes. Segura and Brandon Phillips have cost their offenses a couple of rallies in the last inning. About as uh, fundamental as it gets. I mean, elementary when you first start playing baseball, certain things that you have to do when you're on base, and when you don't do them in the big leagues, it really looks bad. One and two to Ramirez. Count evens at two balls, two strikes. Aramis 
struck out in the second inning. And a lot of base running mistakes are just a, a function of trying to do too much, make something out of nothing. And that's what happened with Segura, and that's what happened to Brandon Phillips. It's not that they're lazy and not wanting to uh, run the bases correctly, they're just trying to do too much out there. Trying to make something happen, and when it doesn't work, it looks bad. Now running with your head down is never a good idea, and I think that essentially is what happened to both players. Segura had his head down on the fly ball to right by Lucroy and turned into an easy double play. And Phillips had his head down, didn't see that Votto had stopped. Votto broke towards third and then stopped. And Phillips was out on the run down, and that left Jay Bruce standing in the box with two on. Full count to Ramirez. Latos can get it going in a hurry. He likes to pitch with a quick pace. He pitches with anger. There's no question about that. He's kind of a modern day Pete Vukovic, if you will. He has some expression on the mound, and when things aren't going quite right, he'll yeah. he'll let you know. Yeah, he's Pete Vukovic with a lot more on his fastball. But he likes to work quickly when there's nobody on base. But boy, he slows things down when there's men on. I guess most pitchers will do that, but Latos takes it to a different level. Very, very deliberate when there's men on base. He certainly has a presence on the mound, and he's six six. So standing on top of the mound, he looks like a giant. Ramirez got fooled. Pop up to Phillips, the Gold Glover, who. Calls it in for the first out. And that will bring up Juan Francisco and his 18 home runs. Tied with. Carlos Gomez on the Powerball home run leaderboard. Brewer is currently fourth in the National League in home runs. They've hit more home runs than the Reds. And the Reds have been pretty much at full strength offensively. The Brewers have not. Milwaukee with 135 home runs and Cincinnati 121. Last year the Brewers led the league in home runs and stolen bases and Francisco got jammed a little. Bruce got a late start but recovers to make the play and two are gone in the fourth inning. Just missed it. That's a kind of swing for Francisco. We're talking about inches on the bat. If he barrels it up, he'll hit it out. But he just got it maybe off the end of the bat a little bit. Man, Leto's put it right where he wanted to, right on the inner half, and ended up missing inside, and Francisco jammed himself. So two up and two down for Chris Davis. Davis starting to hit his way into the discussion concerning next year, getting a, a lot of reps this season. Spent the year in Triple A, had a couple of tours in the big leagues. Actually made an opening day roster for the first time in his career. And once Ryan Braun was suspended for the rest of the season, Davis took his roster spot. That was on July 23rd. It's actually his third stint. In the major leagues. He was here for the opening month and then just a few games in July. I remember Ryan Braun went on the bereavement list, which allows a club to expand the roster by a player, and Davis was that player, and then the Braun was suspended. And Davis has been here ever since, and he rips one foul. And he's had a big impact in the bottom half of the batting order. He and Jeanette have been very good. These guys have uh, infused a bit of energy and some youthful exuberance into this lineup from Milwaukee. It's been fun watching them and watching them develop at the big league level. Chris Davis is in the Brewers' record books. 
His first major league home run came against San Diego and it came as a pinch hitter. The fifth player in franchise history to hit his first major league homer as a pinch hitter. Bob Hansen, Trent Durrington, Prince Fielder, and Taylor Green. Taylor Green did it last year. And now Davis. And he has five of them. Had a pinch hit home run for Prince. Probably the last time he ever hit a pinch hit home run. He started every game since. That's right. Played in every game and just about every inning. That was back in 2005. Fielders. First run in the big leagues. Brought him up for interleague play. Davis hammers that one to center. So Latos hangs one and Davis bangs one. And the Brewers have a base runner with two outs. Yeah, one of the few curveballs that Latos has thrown tonight and ended up right in the eyes of Chris Davis and waited back nicely and shot it in the center field. And you see it that 12 to 6 rotation up around the belt and Davis with a nice approach. It's it right back to center field. Nice. Well, that's a great shot from uh, center field and how squarely he hit that baseball. And had a good sound to it and he is aboard for Scooter Jeanette. A strikeout victim his last time up. Jeanette down the left field line a base hit. So Jeanette uses the opposite field. Yeah, just we were talking about it. it's been fun watching Davis and Jeanette as they get pretty much everyday playing time and they have made the most of it. With two outs, nobody on back to back singles. And the Brewers have a man in scoring position for Logan Schaefer. Another nice approach in the left field. So Jeanette went 10 for 20 on the road trip. That makes him 13 for his last 25 at the plate. Logan Schaefer, two on, two out. He was up in a similar spot. In the second inning, and grounded out to short, and 13 for 25 for uh, Jeanette, and, and not exactly just a single hitter either. He's hitting some home runs in there. Yeah, he had three home runs in that stretch. Two of them came in the same game against the Rangers. Brewers knocking at the door with two away, and Schaefer hits it hard right field. Bruce is back, and it is off the fence on a hop. Delma scores. Here comes Jeanette. He's going to try. No throw. Jeanette scores. And Logan Schaefer delivers with a two RBI double. And the Brewers have a two to nothing lead. How about the kids? Two outs and nobody on. Three consecutive hits. And the Brewers take a lead here in the fourth. Well, Schaefer not messing around. Second pitch and bangs it off the fence and right. It was a curveball for Latos. Latos had a tough time getting that curveball down in the strike zone. And Schaefer centers on it. Nice level swing and over the head of Jay Bruce. And Jeanette with very good speed able to score from first base without a throw. And now Gallardo with a big swing. Schaefer snapping an 0 for 21 stretch at the plate with that double. And it produces two runs. Giving Gallardo an early lead in this one. Gallardo trying to add to it. Fouls it back 0 and 2 the count. I'm sure at some point and it probably would never go public but Matt Latos is looking at this lineup going who are these guys. Having to do his homework on. Chris Davis and Scooter Jeanette and Logan Schaefer. And three straight hits producing the first two runs. Gallardo a bouncer over to Cozart. To end the inning. But Logan Schaefer comes through with a big one. A two out. Two RBI double. And the Brewers are on the board first.
Davis had a two out single that started it and then Scooter Jeanette singled to the opposite field and Logan Schaefer brings him in with a double all with two outs two nothing Milwaukee Gallardo has a one hitter going and we head to the fifth and we'll check in on the action in Pittsburgh Paul Goldschmidt number 30 on the year. Pedro Alvarez also a homer in this game, which was his 30th, but the Diamondbacks roll over the Pirates 15 to 5. And Goldschmidt, not only the league leader in homers with 30, but uh, the league leader in runs batted in as well. Goldschmidt now with 96 RBIs for the season. He's having an MVP type season, but the Arizona Diamondbacks, even with the victory today, find themselves. In a hole in their division. They're eight and a half back of the Dodgers. Dodgers are leading the Phillies two to nothing. That game is in the fifth. Jay Bruce leads off. He was at the plate when Phillips was cut down last inning on a base running blunder. So Bruce bats to lead off the fifth with nobody on after a strikeout in the second inning. Got jammed a little. Aoki is there for out number one. Hey, tonight's time of the game winner is Oscar's Pub and Grill in Milwaukee. If they call the Brewers in the next 24 hours, they get 40 Miller Lite beer pen tickets to a Brewers home game this year. This offer courtesy of the Tavern League of Wisconsin and Miller Lite. He's making that call. You know he's been to Oscar's. He's sporting the old flip phone, too. That's that's nice. Gallardo facing Ryan Ludwig. Interesting people watching at Miller Park. That's one of our favorite things to do. Got a good crowd tonight. Off Park has a lot of atmosphere, a lot of energy. And even with a team that is not contending for a postseason, still such a great place to come hang out and one of the best in the big leagues. Something for everybody here at Miller Park. And especially uh, nice on uh, Bernie's birthday. I haven't quite gotten the story on that just yet. It's his 40th birthday, 40th anniversary with the Brewers, but it's a little backstory to it. Ludwig on the right side. Jeanette having to hurry, throw to first. He is wide, but Lucroy is there to back up. They had Ludwig played to pull, so Jeanette had a long way to go. Could not make the play, and that'll be Ludwig's first hit since coming back from the DL. I'll tell you, Francisco better learn how to get out of the way of the of the base run as he gets down to first baseline. Check this out. Once again, there's uh, one right in front of the path of the runner coming down. That happened on the last road trip. Actually, it happened here against Cincinnati. Mezzarocco and uh, Francisco got into a pile and. Juan's got to be a little bit more aware of where that runner is. Of course, I think uh, Juan's going to get the better of the uh, collision <laughs> most yeah. of the time. You see, uh, you see the base runner slow down. It's kind of like when Prince Fielder played over there. Put his body right in the baseline, and no one ever challenged him. Would you? First instinct is to go around. Back to the mound. Gallardo Segura in time with a double play. Room service for Giovanni Gallardo. It goes 1 6 3, and the inning is over. Gallardo is rolling today. He's through five. He's working on a shutout. There's two hits allowed.
working with our Brewers minor league system on our minor league report. Brock Hailgard for the Huntsville Stars last night went one for three with a solo shot. His 20th home run of the season, nearly 60 RBIs for him. The Stars won four to two. Jonathan Lucroy will come up to bat. And with uh, Ryan Braun, Corey Hart, even Aramis Ramirez missing a lot of action, Lucroy has become that go-to guy in a clutch at bat. He said he doesn't believe in putting pressure on himself depending on whether he's hit in the three-hole. Just staying within yourself, keeping that approach simple, make hard contact, but put the ball in play. And that approach has certainly worked out for him, guys. Yeah, it really has. He's embraced that role. And I like what he told Sophia earlier. It's, you know, you could get a little keyed up in different spots in the order. Certainly when you bat third in a big league, Lineup, you're expected to produce. And uh, Luke Roy said all the right things. I don't know if his emotions are necessarily that way, but he does have such a good swing. You can understand why he is so confident as a hitter in any role, in any spot of the batting order. You know, and watching him in his career, it's not surprising that he's doing what he's doing right now. What was the big surprise was his slow start in April. I mean, that's the one thing that was stunning. Because Luke Roy's got the kind of approach, kind of swing that normally he's going to be able to stay out of long stretches where he's not getting hit. I was watching uh, Jonathan Luke Roy take batting practice today, and I was looking at his bat, and it's it's really beat up. It's an old looking bat. As Aoki pulls one foul, so I asked him about it, and uh, the reason I asked because Aoki had a brand new bat. Which you don't see a lot of either, but Luke Roy told me he's using the same bat the entire season. You asked him about that? I said, What's up with your bat? That's not obviously his gamers in much better shape, but to go a, an entire season, think how many swings and how much contact he's made in batting practice. Right. I mean, you can understand maybe a guy punching out a lot, but he does not. I think the longest I ever had a bat was about three at bat. Is that right? That hung in there a while. Well, either I, they either broke or I just gave up on them. <laughs> <laughs> this one isn't working. They gave up on you or you gave up on them either way. Yeah, a little bit of both. But his bat, uh, his batting practice bat is completely worn right in the sweet spot, which tells you and every major league hitter during BP, you know, they're going to square up balls. It's not a problem, but <laughs> it was a pretty impressive. There's a bunt and the only play is first. So Segura advances Aoki. That'll go as a sacrifice. And here comes Lucroy and his birch bat. The birch wood. Rock was talking about his start, and that was what was so surprising about Lucroy's year and coming off the, the WBC and disrupted his spring training. A 208 batting average in his first 36 games, and the Brewers were going very poorly at the time. But in his last 72, which seems like more of the hitter that he is normally, hitting 324. Well, using up the middle, you know, early in the season, if you remember in April, there was a lot of, you know, six to three, five to three put outs, rolling over on pitches, jumping out a little bit. And he's not doing that anymore. Well, he is becoming the one of the real talents in the game and one of the best run producing catchers in the game. He doesn't have the the name recognition yet. It's tough to make an all star team in the National League when you're a catcher. Got guys like Miguel Montero in years past and Buster Posey the MVP Yadier Molina who homer today and some good catchers in baseball. As Arako to the mound, Jonathan Lucroy, the way you make your name as you deliver in big spots, and his first career walk off against Roldis Chapman, no less. And the Brewers go from a run down six to five to a game winner, seven six final score as Lucroy popped his 17th home run of the season in a seven pitch at bat, all fastballs until that hanging slider. And Luke Pro was able to end the game. He's in a hitter's count against Latos, and that one's in the air, right center, pretty well hit. But Bruce with room. I hope he's going to tag, and he'll make it to third. 
but two men are out. And just missed that one. Got under it a little bit. They hit it well, but in the right center. So Aoki at third base for Ramos Ramirez. And fastball up right down the middle, and Lucre with that approach that. No, he takes with men on base just about every time. He's trying to shoot it up the middle. Just missed it. Brewers lead 2 nothing. Ramirez is hoping to add to it. He's 0 for 2 against Latos with a strikeout. Latos fooled him on a breaking ball in the fourth inning, and he popped him up to second. Two and one. Latos always has that scowl on the mound. See what he goes with here. Going to go with a slider in a hitter's count. And Ramirez chases. Well, that is a great pitch. That's among the best in the big leagues right there. Yeah, looks like he has two different forms of that slider. He's got a bigger one that he's going to throw. Not the curveball, but the slider. And this is the short one. Not much of a break. Just goes down a little bit. And Mazzarocco very fortunate that that ball didn't skip by him. Aoki was ready to run. He would have easily scored. Back to the heat. Two and two to Ramirez. And he hit him. Ouch. Latos trying to come inside drills Ramirez on a two strike pitch. That's the second time he's been hit. In the series and both have come on two strike pitches. Yeah, that was a 2 2 pitch that. Latos tried to come in on the inside corner you see Mezzarocco setting up. Fastball up and in got him right on the pan. That will soften the blow a bit. So Ramirez is aboard first and third now. I hope he started this inning with a walk. Here is Francisco the former red with two away. Juan certainly hoping to inflict some damage to his old team. Signed and developed by the Reds. Brought to the big leagues. Traded to Atlanta and then the Brewers acquired him. From the Braves this year. Francisco coming off a road trip where he had nine hits and three homers. Has one hit in this series against his old team. It was a home run. And tonight making his 50th start of the season at first base. He had never played a game at first base in the major leagues until this year. Although he did hit, play a little first base in the winter league in the Caribbean. Leto strikes him out. So the Brewers strand two runners at the corners left. 2 0 Milwaukee. We go to the sixth.
Next, then the Brewers in a stretch where they will play 32 of 35 games against their NL Central rivals. Giovanni Gallardo spoke with me about how they can impact the playoff picture. We can uh, quite a bit. Like I said, I mean, it's obviously, uh, uh, I mean, unfortunately, uh, we don't have very much pressure on us uh, as far as uh, the playoff picture. But, you know, just like I said, it's always more competitive and more uh more uh, exciting games once you're playing teams on your division and you know we're going to go out there with the kind of guys that we have here and try to win every game every game and uh, you know finish off the season strong guys Ron Renneke was looking for good command life on his fastball from Gallardo what have you seen from him through this first five well Gallardo has been outstanding I mean be able to control his pitch count he's only at 62 pitches right now as we head into the sixth inning and he's getting outs early in counts He's walked only one batter and I don't think it's a bad thing that he only has three strikeouts. I think that works in his favor given that he hasn't pitched in two weeks. Well, pitch count is in good shape at 63 as you look at our Ho-Chunk gaming text question. James wants to know does Gallardo have a pitch count tonight seeing it as his uh, first start since an injury and I think Ron Renneke said at best they'll start paying close attention around 75 but if he's cruising along and they feel like he's not laboring on the mound and they'll make their decision at that time so he has easy innings which he has had for the most part had to bear down a little bit in the fourth inning after a, a two out walk and then a two out single but the Reds really helped him out with a base running mistake that got him out of the inning it's really the only trouble he's been in tonight as a lines one right to Segura on a 3 1 pitch Gallardo gets it out. And it looked like a cut fastball from Giovanni and looked like Mezirak out in front a little bit. He got the line drive. And there it is. Perfectly placed at shortstop. And the first out of the six, Gallardo will face Latos now, the Reds pitcher. Latos has seven hits this season. Stands up there like a hitter. He's got the got the ankle brace on. Fills up that batter's box at six six. And that ball's hit well to center field. Schaefer going back at the track. He's got it. Logan Schaefer runs it down as smooth as it gets out there. Yeah, playing a little bit deeper than he normally does. I think that uh, Ron Renneke a little bit you know, fearful that another collision against the wall might put out another center fielder. So you move him back a couple of steps to play it safe, making that catch a little bit easier for Schaefer. Although he was in a little bit with the pitcher up. He just kind of glided over there and made it look easy. Yeah, that's a good way to describe him too. He is a glider. Different kind of style than Carlos Gomez who attacks the baseball and the wall and anything else out there. Schaefer very smooth. We've seen a lot of Logan Schaefer over the years especially in Arizona. You can always tell who the good outfielders are in Arizona because of the high sky and the big ballparks there. It's always an adventure with outfielders. In the Cactus League, Schaefer from day one has always been very comfortable, very smooth. And I think that has impressed the Brewer coaching staff when they were making decisions about who the fourth outfielder would be, making those decisions last year. And Schaefer's been with the big league club all season. He's not at 100 percent right now either. That's one thing that needs to be stated. He's dealing with a bit of a, a left knee problem. Nothing major, but. He's not running at his best at this point. That's one of his greatest assets his speed. As yeah. Chu takes a strike. Show me a big leaguer that is 100 percent right now. <laughs> That's a good point. I mean we're sitting here in the middle of August. And nobody's feeling all that great. And the dog days are upon us. And that one pretty close to being at the bottom of the strike zone. It's 
two and two. And it's outside three balls two strikes. Lucroy and Gallardo have teamed up to uh, spin a beauty tonight so far. Just a two hitter. And a payoff pitch. Chu takes ball four. Close. All right, where's that? Let's go. Yeah, Lucroy thought he had him rung up. Not the case. That's a two out walk. And Ron Renneke is barking at Mike Winters. And that's two pitches in that at bat. It looked like they should have been strikes. Here's a cut fastball from Yo. And uh, I'm not sure where it missed, but uh, Mike Winters gives Chu first base. That's a gift. Hey, that's not a strike. What is? Made a great pitch. Getting no reward for it. So now he's got to deal with Todd Frazier with a runner at first. Remember the old saying, too close to take? Doesn't exist anymore. Yeah, I don't think so. I, I mean, mean, it's it, just it, the opposite. Yeah, I mean, why would you swing at a close pitch these days? Because good chance it's not going to be called. Your odds are better to take it if it's borderline, especially with two strikes. Frazier has got some pop. He homered here yesterday. And hits that one in the air to right. Aoki will give it a look, but it'll slice foul. One ball, one strike on Todd Frazier. With the Little League uh, World Series going on right now, and Frazier made a name for himself. Remember that Tom's River, New Jersey team that I won do. the Little League World Series? My old stomping grounds. Yeah. He was not, the star player on that team. Right, not too far from the old stomping grounds, but you know, since they won the Little League World Series, I'm going to say it's right in my backyard. And winner says he goes and it's a ball and two strikes. Yeah, I don't blame you. It was a great uh, Little League World Series. Frazier pitched and was the star hitter. Yeah, he went. Don't see a whole lot of those Little League players end up in the big leagues. But Frazier's been one. Think of the odds. Yeah. One and two the count. Did your Little League teams ever get close to a World Series appearance? No. I think we won our uh, our league one year. Yeah, good for you. Hamilton Township. <laughs> <laughs> I think we got uh, all Slurpees for it. Is that right? Yeah, that was it. So pizza? Yeah. That's the thing about baseball, right? It's not it's not just Major League Baseball that makes it so great. Right. Love Little League. Great memories. Most of them had to do with the food afterwards. It's Frazier pops it up. Will it stay playable? Looks like it. Francisco is over and he's got it. Right in front of his buddy Willie Peralta. <laughs> Francisco makes a play and Gallardo is through six. Scoreless.
reminding you to please play responsibly. And by Miller Lite, it's not just a good time, it's Miller time. We are off and running. The Italian wins it. The Brewers have a 2 to nothing lead. And this week, you can come on out to Miller Park as your Milwaukee Brewers host the St. Louis Cardinals this Monday through Wednesday. For tickets, you can call 414-902-4000 or visit Brewers.com. This run against the National League Central continues with the Cardinals this week, guys. Looking forward to that. The Cardinals coming to town. St. Louis shutting out the Chicago Cubs today. That's where the Reds were prior to this series. They swept the Cubs. And Cincinnati had won four straight. They won the opener here on Thursday, pushing their winning streak to five before Luke Croy ended it all with one swing of the bat last night. Yeah, first two games of the series, good games, both of them. Chris Davis leading off. The Brewers lead 2 0. Davis has singled and scored, and he has walked. Brewers scored those two runs in the fourth, and Davis started it with two outs. Davis, Jeanette, and Schaefer all had hits. Schaefer's was a double, and it drove in two. Davis gets sawed off. Latos covers the bag, and Votto flips it to him for the first out. Well, don't forget, you can catch a new episode of West Coast Customs with famed car customizer Ryan Friedlinghouse and his crew. Don't miss a new episode tomorrow. One of the most dynamic card shops in the country. Saw some cool rides out there today. Big tailgating scene out in the uh, Miller Park parking lot. Just, I mean, ideal tailgating weather today. Absolutely. It's supposed to be nice all week. Perfect weather. We're lucky. We're very fortunate to have weather like this in August. It's a beautiful setting here tonight. Roof is open, big crowd on hand. Got the moon out, shining brightly. Great time of year. What kind of gibbous are we looking at there, Rock? No, not, I don't know. You know, I, the road I sent trip, you the picture. Well, the road trip kind of threw me. I have, I'm completely off of my moon phases. <laughs> I could tell. <laughs> We've been meaning to uh, talk to you about that. Let me check. Yeah, I was at the uh, Natural Science and History Museum in um, in Arlington or in Dallas, downtown Dallas. And there it was. As soon as I walked in, there was a giant picture, this digital image of the the moon phases with all of your waxing and waning gibbous. So you see a moon, you think of me. I do. <laughs> it looked just like you as well. You might want to explain that. <laughs> there it is. Hey, Rock. <laughs> it's beautiful. It's a beautiful gibbous. <laughs> I learned a lot that day, but I forgot most of it. It's a little intimidating to be there with my 13 year old as Jeanette strikes out to give Latos his 6K. There's that slider going straight down by Matt Latos. So you see the grip, the spin. And just disappears against the home plate. And Jeanette flying out of there. He struck out twice. Does have a hit though. Got a single and a run scored. So two outs for Latos, and that'll bring up Logan Schaefer. He ripped one over Bruce's head back in the fourth inning. Came with two outs. It was a hanging curveball from Latos. And Schaefer didn't miss it. Put the Brewers on the board. The only scoring of the game tonight. That one hit by Schaefer. Pitch count at 99 for Matt Latos. It's really been a struggle throughout. The Brewers have had opportunities against Latos. One for seven with runners in scoring position. They've stranded six ba six base runners so far tonight. Schaefer foul. 
And it's one and two. Latos had gone a couple starts without giving up a run. But that start against Oakland at home, winning his 11th game, and went seven and a third against the A's with no runs, and then eight shutout innings against the Cubs his last time out. He's been on a winning run lately. He's won four of his last five starts, his last four decisions are victories. And five of his last six decisions are wins. 12 and 3, 304 earned run average. And you talk to the folks that cover this ball club, the Reds, they'll tell you that he may be the MVP of this entire team. You know, we're not just talking about the most valuable pitcher, but the guy that has made the biggest impact. Everybody thinks about Joey Votto and Brandon Phillips when they think about the Reds, but Matt Leto certainly has been a key component. Those 12 wins, 12 and 3, ERA just over 3. And he's only, what, 25 years old? Yeah, he'll be 26 in November. He's got a lot of experience pitching the postseason last year, had a terrific outing out of the bullpen when Johnny Cueto was injured in game. Uh, one of that NLDS against the Giants and then he came back for a start and struggled gave up a grand slam to Buster Posey as the Giants would come back from down 2-0 to win that series. So a learning season postseason for the Reds. They were swept by the Phillies in 2010. That was the Roy Holiday no hitter game. Part of that series. And it's by no stretch of the imagination, a young club, particularly the position player. These guys have uh, some experience under their belt. They've got some young pitchers, though. Schaefer, lazy fly ball. And Bruce and Chu converge. Chu will, uh, Chu will take it. Not Chu. Chu will take it. Two in the inning. Brought to you by Toyota and the star has been Gallardo. Six shutout innings. He's given up just two hits. One of those was an infield hit. Logan Schaefer put the Brewers on the board. The only run producing hit of the game was a two out. Two RBI double in the fourth. Scored Davis and Jeanette. Matt Latos has been good. Just not quite as good as Gallardo at this point. Six innings with two earned runs allowed. And that's where we stand. The chicken on his head. That <laughs> makes him the egg, right? <laughs> so we go to the seventh now, and it'll be Joey Votto. Gallardo is back out there, and these are all bonus innings at this point. 
for Ron Renneke and Rick Kranitz concerning Gallardo coming back from an injury. A little over two weeks on the disabled list, and he is working into the seventh inning. He's about as efficient as we have ever seen Giovanni Gallardo in the game. And a soft liner out to Ramirez. So everything going right for Gallardo. It's been a couple of line drive outs in this game. And Votto is retired. He is 0 for 2 with a walk. Don't forget, we have our Brewers Live post game show coming your way with Craig and Augie and our Brewers Live post game instructional. Teaching you the basics of baseball. Yeah, John Shelby is going to uh, be uh, with us. It was uh, me and John in spring training. He's going to talk about uh, running through the bag when you run into first base. Not running to the bag, running through the bag and the proper techniques of that. T bone. A World Series champion, John Shelby. Great coach. Face running coach, outfield coach. Good player. Played against them when he was with the Orioles. I was talking to uh, Adam Jones recently when we were uh, out doing an Orioles game, and he gives John Shelby a lot of credit for making him a gold glove outfielder. Jones won that gold glove last year, and he sent a replica gold glove model. Of the glove he uses to John Shelby as a thank you. There's a base hit by Phillips. And he's two out of three. He has two of the three Cincinnati hits. And both have come back up the middle. Yep, fastball that leaked down the heart of the plate, and Phillips pulling the hands in and shooting it into center field. So tying run comes to the plate and is Jay Bruce. And a power hitter. Leads his club in home runs with 24. And Ricky. Coming out to the home plate umpire might be making a change here. Yep, a double switch. So he's going to go for Kensler in a spot like this. But going to ask Kensler to maybe give him. A couple of innings the pitcher spot is due up. First in the bottom of the seventh inning. So Jeanette is out. Double switch is the play, and we'll take a break, clean it all up when we come back. may purchase Terrace Reserve seats for just $9, courtesy of Miller High Life. Visit Brewers.com slash High Life. And Ron Renneke said before tonight's game, Gallardo came into this season with a lot of pressure, said he's been inconsistent. We really need to get him going this last month and a half of the season. Three hit shutout for him tonight. Definitely what Renneke was looking for. There he goes six and a third tonight. Two walks, three strikeouts. And just a, a runner that is still out there, his responsibility. And so Ron Renneke makes the change here. Going with a double switch. Brandon Kensler is on the pitch. Jeffy Yankee will play second base and lead off. 
in the bottom of the city. Yeah, yes. this is ordinarily a spot that you might see Michael Gonzalez, but Gonzalez has been roughed up lately, having a very difficult time throwing strikes. Had a rough road trip, but Brandon Kinsler on, he has been tremendous. A 245 earned run average for Brandon in game number 51. That power sinker against Jay Bruce, and Bruce lines one to the opposite field. He jumps on the first pitch, and the Reds are putting up a threat here with two on and one out. The tying run is aboard. Bruce wasting no time against Kinsler. And Brandon pitched a scoreless eighth inning on Thursday against the Reds and has not allowed a run in his last 16 appearances. Good job by Jay Bruce to stay on it. That sinker was up, but it was off the plate. Goes right with it into left field. So here is Ludwig with his first base hit since returning and his first hit of the year, believe it or not, after missing four months. He was injured opening day. Took him a while to get that first hit of the season. That was an infield hit back in the fifth inning. And that was to second base, something that he rarely does, hitting a ground ball to the right side. And the Brewers convinced that he's not going to do it again because they have Jeanette right up the middle. Brewers look to turn two. And Ludwig gets jammed. Bianchi on the way out. Bianchi cannot get there. A base hit. And the bases are loaded now. That's right. Double switch. Bianchi at second base. Right, a little flare. And now the Reds are in business. He got in on his hands. He ate him up inside, but Yankee just not able to get there in the short center field. Did all he could do. Got came about three feet away. So Dusty Baker is going to go to his bench now. Gives you an idea of where Zach Cozart is as a hitter at this point in the manager's mind. Cozart. It's a lot of ground balls and he bounced into a double play his last time up. So Baker goes to Xavier Paul. To pinch hit with the bases loaded and he's going to take his shot right here in the seventh. Pinch hitting for the shortstop Cozart. Paul is seven for twenty five as a pinch hitter. Three of those seven hits are home runs. Reds with their biggest threat. Bases loaded, one out. Got Phillips over at third. He's singled. Bruce had the single to the opposite field, and Ludwig had the flare in the shallow center. And Kinsler needing a ground ball or a strikeout in a big way. And there's your ground ball. The Yankee. Segura throwing a first in time, and Kinsler. Gets out of it with a double play. Bases loaded, one out, and Kinsler makes the pitch. The Brewers go 4 6 3. Shutout still intact. It's 2 0 crew.
first to lead it two to nothing. And our home run leaderboard is a little bit surprising for the middle of August. We check in with the results of our AT&T Twitter poll asking which leader is the most surprising. 28% went with Gomez, 27 Francisco, 45% to the walk-off hero from Jonathan Lucroy last night, his 17th of the season. He's still looking for his first hit of the night, but has gone 11 for 23 in his last six on quite a roll right now. It really is. He's doing a great job behind the plate as well. Brandon Kinsler coming up with a big pitch and a big jam. And keeps the shutout intact as Jeff Bianchi, who entered the game on that double switch and started the double play, will lead off. Kensler likely headed back out for the eighth inning as well. Yeah, no activity in the Brewers bullpen. And so Kinsler able to do what Ron Redigy wanted him to do. It just took him a couple of batters later than he anticipated as Caesar Turris takes over it. At shortstop. That gets past Latos, but Phillips is there. A strong throw to get the Yankee for the first out. So Latos with a pitch count of 107. And really just a couple of mistakes for him in that fourth inning rock. There are a couple of hanging curveballs. Yep, hung one to Davis, and then he hung one to Schaefer. That was his undoing so far that. Two, two run double with two outs. And Brewers inning started in the fourth with two outs, a couple of pop ups, and then three consecutive hits. At the plate presented by Wendy's for Aoki tonight, who bats with one away. He's walked and he's single. He also lined out. He sent Bruce back to the wall in the first inning. Chopper over the head of Frazier. Tough one here is Turris. No chance. Maybe Cozart, who has a very good throwing arm, but his tourists not as strong these days. And Aoki beats it out, his second hit of the game. Maybe a little, maybe a step slower than Zach Cozart as well. So uh, Aoki with still another infield hit from Milwaukee. And it seems like they get a couple of those a night. He and Gene Segura lead the major leagues in that category. Segura's number one. Aoki two and a team that leads the league in infield hits. Aoki with his 30th infield hit. And it's really not even close. The Brewers now have 144 infield hits. The second place team in the major leagues are the Angels with 119. <laughs> Speed and the ability to make contact, and that's what it's all involved. I mean, instead of the swing and a miss, you you dribble one in the infield. You have good speed. You're able to beat them out. Segura with 37 infield hits, and that 37th infield hit was a big one last night. He was in a battle with Chapman. Lucroy made the headlines, but Segura had the at bat that started the inning. Bounces out into second. Phillips puts the tag on Aoki and completes the double play. And that will end the inning. So Latos is through seven. Brewers lead 2 nothing. We go to the eight.
eighth inning. Got the final two outs on a double play in the seventh. And a big play at that. Two nothing, Brew Crew. Miller Light, what's on tap? Two time no hit, Homer Bailey on the mound tomorrow for Cincinnati. Had one earlier this year. Willie Peralta will pitch for the Brewers. That's a day game tomorrow. 12.30 is air time. First pitch just after 1 o'clock. Yeah, good stuff in that game. Homer Bailey, Willie Peralta throwing the baseball well. Willie's well, got his ERA down to 4.30. He was up near 6 about a month ago. He is my call for the next Brewer pitcher to throw a no hitter. There's only been one. And I'm saying Peralta's going to throw one before his career as a Brewer is over. Nice. How about that for going out a little later? How about tomorrow? Okay. Day game, shadows. It's going to be a bright, sunny day. I'm all in. Electric stuff, Willie Peralta. All right, so here we go to the eighth. Devin Mezzarocco will lead off the Reds catcher. You have a pinch hitter for Latos. Looks like Jack Hanahan has moved on deck. Gallardo started with six and a third, no runs on three hits. Reds had him loaded last inning with one out before Kinsler got. Xavier Paul to bounce into the 4 6 3 double play. The Brewers have turned two double plays tonight. Still going to have to go through Votto and Phillips and company to get to the finish line in this one. Another direct hit for Jonathan Lucroy. Hey, and think about where Brandon Kinsler started the season. Back end of the bullpen, you know, middle relief, long relief. Ron Renke trying to find him ways to get him in the ball game, but uh, now he is a key component in that bullpen and the setup man right now for Jim Henderson. Nobody on this staff throwing the ball any better than Brandon. Boy, he has great stuff going. That ball just diving to the bottom of the zone and a strikeout against Mezzarocco. That power sinking fastball at 93 miles an hour. And there you see the two seam grip, and he gets that late movement, and most hitters are going to be over the top of it. And more importantly, with Kinsler throwing strikes with it, you know, getting ahead in the count and having hitters chase that that good slider that he throws out of the strike zone. So a pinch hitter announced Jack Hanahan will bat for Dusty Baker. That'll close the book on Matt Latos. Latos goes seven innings with six hits and two runs. They were both earned. Both of those runs coming in on the Schaefer double in the fourth. Three walks, six strikeouts for Latos. He pitched well, but he's on the hook for the loss. Hanahan is eight for 30 as a pinch hitter. That's a 267 average. Dusty Baker used Xavier Paul last inning. He bounced into the double play that ended the inning, and now Hanahan off his bench. Another ground ball. Bianchi. Two outs now. Let's take a look at our Pinky Fast delivery brought to you by Jimmy John's and Gallardo delivering this one right to Segura. Room service double play that got him out of the fifth inning after an infield hit by Ludwig. And took his time and Segura with the big arm over the first base. Gallardo had a good night tonight in his return to the mound and he's had good success against the Reds this season. Made three starts against him and twice did not allow a run. As Chu bounces out and Kinsler just keeps it rolling. Nobody been better than this guy. Brewers lead a two set, bottom of the eighth, coming your way.
been a fun night at the ballpark for Brewers fans tonight. Bernie celebrating his 40th birthday. And the 37,000 on hand tonight. Have a great time. <laughs> They're all jumping around here, Rock. He brought his buddy with him, too. Yeah. It's Logan Andrusik. 35th appearance of the season. Been an up and down year for him, literally. He's been up and down from the big leagues. He's also been injured this year. And trying to get settled in as the Reds hit this home stretch of the pennant race. Yeah, he got uh, called up again on uh, June 29th when Johnny Cueto went back on the disabled list. And in 13 appearances since coming back, a 277 earned run average for Andrusek. Sinker slider. He pitched on Sunday against San Diego. That was back on August 11th. And inning in the third, scoreless. Jonathan Lucroy on the first pitch, gloved by Frazier. And there is out number one. Well, you can't say enough about Brandon Kensler and what he has done lately. He has really emerged as. One of the more reliable pieces the Brewers have had at any stretch during the season. He comes in tonight, gets a big double play with the bases loaded, and then a three up, three down eighth, and is making it look easy. Yeah. Well, Brewer pitching has been making it look easy. You know, good start again for Giovanni Gallardo. The starters continue to be very good, and Kinsler. You know, part of a group of young pitchers that have really done a good job this year. Ramirez pops it up. Cesar is Torres, the former Brewer, makes the catch. Two up and two down. Well, the Reds are going to have the heart of their order coming up. Frazier, Votto, Brandon Phillips. If anybody gets on, Jay Bruce. It was clinging to a two run lead. Logan Schaefer drove them both in with one swing of the bat in the fourth, a double, came with two outs. Gallardo was terrific in his return. Had one big timely hit by the Brewers, and so far, excellent work from the bullpen and Kensler. Jim Henderson preparing for a save opportunity. Just looking at some of the numbers on Kensler. So he now has 23 of his last 24 appearances unscored upon. He's given up two earned runs in right at 30 innings during that stretch. Just two. And doing it with two pitches. I mean two very good pitches the power sinker and the slider getting ahead not walking batters. Sounds simple doesn't it. Yeah, it does. But it's not it's great stuff. He's got 17 scoreless innings consecutive now. Or rather outings 17 scoreless outings covers nearly 20 innings. And he bridged the gap from Gallardo to Henderson in a big way tonight. Counter Baines two and two on Francisco. Full count, two outs. Francisco pops it up. Ludwig is over. And he's got it to end the inning. And we are all set for the ninth. Jim Henderson trying to save it. Part of the order coming up. We'll check in with Craig and Augie when we continue.
Getting set for Brewers Live postgame coming up after the ballgame. Brewers, a nice 2-0 lead right now. Giovanni Gallardo, though, Jerry, our Marshfield Clinic shining moment of the game. What a start after coming off the DL tonight. I'll tell you what, we talked about he had to have the good command of his fastball, and that's exactly what he had. But he also had those secondary pitches. One thing when he pitches against the Cincinnati Reds, it's about being able to use all his pitches. His secondary pitches were very important tonight. And his defense was pretty nice as well. So, yo, six and a third inning of shutout baseball that sets the stage now for the Brewers here in the ninth and Jim Henderson and some good defensive replacements in Bettencourt behind him as well three more outs to go for another Brewer victory Brian all right Craig thanks Henderson has been lights out coming back from the hamstring injury once he got the closers roll back he has 17 saves this year Columbia St. Mary's save tracker and he has seven in a row now his last two saves, Rock, have been of the inning in the third variety. Yeah, picked up 17 on uh, Tuesday against the Rangers. An inning in the third. He's made 11 straight scoreless appearances. Well, a key hitter to start this inning. Todd Frazier. You got Joey Votto on deck. And Brandon Phillips to follow. If anybody gets on, Jay Bruce. Reds are where they want to be in the batting order. But they are trailing 2 nothing as Henderson... Misses away. One ball, one strike. Well, Henderson has been very good his last 11 games. Messi has not allowed a run. Seven for seven in save opportunities. Getting ahead with the fastball. Putting hitters away with the slider. And really has been very, uh, using the slider sparingly. It's been mostly fastballs for Henderson in a long stretch of games. Matter of fact, there have been outings where he has not even thrown any sliders. There was a game in San Francisco on the last road trip. Henderson went an inning in the third for the save. He threw 25 consecutive fastballs in that inning in the third. He's going with a slider here. One ball, two strikes. Yeah, Frazier down on strikes. Great pitch, perfect spot. Frazier strikes out and one gone in the night. Well, now it gets a little hairy for Henderson when you have the big three coming up. But he's been he's able to get the right hander. Frazier made him look bad on the slider. Well located, didn't leave it up in the zone and on the outside corner. Henderson against Joey Votto in a two-nothing Brewer lead. Henderson has three blown saves, but they were essentially as a pitching in a setup role. It was technically a blown save because of the time of the game, but it came in the eighth inning, and he was not the closer at that time. Frankie Rodriguez was closing games at that point. Rodriguez was traded to the Orioles. Henderson resumed the closer's duties, and he's been lights out ever since. By the way, Rodriguez uh, left yesterday's game with the Orioles with a groin injury. He's had been pitching pretty well for Baltimore. That cleared the way for Henderson. And he picks up where he left off at the start of the year before the injury. Spent a couple of weeks on the disabled list with a hamstring injury. His velocity's been good. It's been consistent even when he's been, a been asked to pitch. You know, more than one inning and last pitch at 97. He's behind in the count on Votto. Two and one. Votto late fouls it off. Fastball up in the strike zone. Upper 90s for Henderson and you know, Votto underneath and late. Lucroy doing some thinking behind the plate. Otto's a tough guy to game plan for, but he goes with the heat. Two and two the count. And Votto fouls that one back. And he'll do that for a while too. Henderson trying to keep the tying run on deck. Brewers got two in the fourth. Looking for the shutout of the Reds.
Count remains at three and two. It seems like Vado just trying to stay alive, fight him off. Not a very aggressive swing. That's what he does up at the plate. He'll just wear you down. And until you throw four pitches out of the strike zone, basically. I can't imagine that Henderson would throw a, a slider in this spot. Full count and a fastball. Got him. 97 with the heat. Off the plate. Oh, Votto. Looked like he swung a ball four. But you don't have a whole lot of time to think about what you want to do. It was off the outside corner. Votto waves at it. And Henderson one out away. Way behind that pitch. So the Reds down to their last out. Back to back strikeouts for Henderson. And here is Brandon Phillips, who is two out of three, two singles. That's two of the five Cincinnati hits. And he bunts and pops it up foul. Out of reach. The Brewers were the last team in the major leagues to post a shutout, and it came against Cincinnati. But it wasn't until June 15th. And the Brewers have had 10 since that time. Oh, and one to Phillips. Oh, and two to count. Took a big cut. And just pouring in the strikes is Jim Henderson getting ahead in the count. Fastball, very hittable, and right off the chest protector of Mike Winters. Lucroy checking on the home plate umpire, making sure he's all right. Buying a little favor, perhaps. Going with a slider. 0 oh 2 to Phillips. Here it comes, and Phillips lays off. Interesting that. The Reds have been shut out eight times this year. The Brewers are responsible for two of those at this point. Henderson a chance to make it a third time. The one two. Got him. Jim Henderson saves it. Strikes out the side in the ninth, and the Brewers win. A 2 nothing final. Logan Schaefer delivers the two runs with a double. Way back in the fourth inning, and the Brewers get their 11th shutout of the season. And for the third time, they shut out Cincinnati. And they have won two out of the first three games with one to go tomorrow. Beautiful ball game tonight for the Milwaukee Brewers. Make it a winner out of Gallardo. As we check in with Craig Deshaun, it's time for Brewers Live. Craig? All right, Brian, we've got a good one on the way. Giovanni Gallardo pitching a gem. We'll show you what kind of dominance he's had over the Reds this season, but it was his first game back in more than two weeks. Hope to hear from you. Ron Renneke, Brewers Live is all next. <laughs> 